Okay, 5 over 2x cubed. That's just like the problems that you've been doing. Okay, when you rewrite it, the constants do not move. The only thing that moves is the x to the third. We move it to the numerator and give it the negative exponent. Okay, 5 and the 2 stay exactly where they're at. So, dy over dx is equal to bring down your exponent, multiply, subtract 1. Okay, every single time. Bring down the exponent, multiply, subtract 1. Make sure that you keep kind of a constant um, process there, I guess for the lack of a better term. So that's negative 15 over 2x to the fourth when we simplify things. Yes, ma'am? You can do dy over dx, or in the next problem, I'm going to use y prime. Either one of those. You need to have some kind of notation telling me that that is the derivative. You need to have one or the other, yes. Okay, now B looks very, very similar to A. However, I've put some parentheses there. Here's what you need to do whenever there are parentheses. You need to <coughs> apply that exponent first. So when you're multiplying things inside parentheses that are raised to an exponent, you apply that exponent to each term. So this is really 5 over 8 times x to the negative 3. If you do not apply that exponent first, your derivative will not be correct. So when we take the derivative, this time I'm going to use y prime. I don't care which notation you use when there's a y. I'm just trying to keep mixing it up between the two so you are used to seeing both of them. Okay. Bring down the exponent, multiply by the constant in front, subtract one from the exponent, clean it up, Okay, so similar answer, but slightly different. Okay, we're going to look at two more like this. Now, uh, very rarely are you going to see a negative exponent that originates in the denominator, but this is just for argument's sake here. Okay, f of x is equal to 7 over 3x to the negative 2. Again, when we rewrite this, the only thing that moves is the variable with the exponent. This time it becomes positive. That's nice. Okay, so f prime of x is going to be bring down the exponent, multiply by the constant, subtract 1 from the exponent, so this derivative is 14x over 3, or 14 thirds x, either way. And I'm not going to move it back down to the denominator because that's dumb to introduce a negative exponent. I mean, it really is. Introduce a negative exponent. We try to avoid the negative exponents. Okay. Um, now, for D... I've done the same thing. I've thrown parentheses in there. This time, I'm still going to apply that exponent, but I'm going to make it a positive exponent first. Okay, so 3x was in parentheses, so this time the 3 does move to the numerator. So that's 7 times 3 squared, x squared, which is 7 times 9, which is 63. So when we take this derivative up with a very different expression, 2 times 63, x to the first, which is 126x. Very, very different answer from the answer in C, other than the x is the same. Yes, ma'am? Because it was negative. It started as negative. So anytime we move it between the numerator and the denominator, it's going to change signs. Okay. 
Okay, so it started in the denominator as negative, so if we move it to the numerator, it's going to be a positive exponent. I'm going to have you practice in the textbook with these in a minute, but I want to go ahead and look at um, one more example while we're taking notes, and then uh, I'll let you practice with both of them. Okay, so I mentioned yesterday when we were writing equations of tangent lines that life would be a lot easier once we started learning our rules. So let's, let's apply this. Now that we know our rule, let's write the equation of a tangent line. Or we're going to start by finding the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, um, so we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change at the given point, and then we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at that point. So our function is f of x is equal to negative three x squared plus eight x minus five, and we are told to do this when x equals three. Okay, so remember, instantaneous rate of change means derivative at a point. So we need to begin by taking the derivative of our function, f prime of x is equal to, now I'm not going to write it all out, I'm just going to go ahead and, and combine. So the derivative of negative 3x squared is negative 6x plus 8. Okay? You should become very, very comfortable with the polynomials and be able to do it kind of like this in one step. Okay, So that is the general derivative. That would have taken us a lot longer to do that using the limit definition. Right? Yes? You do not have to take the derivative using the limit definition anymore. No. But you still need to know it so you can recognize it when they give you the limit definition. They ask you well, what function is this taking the derivative of? You need to be able to recognize that. Huh? You will still have to use it on that free response question um, because of the 6x as opposed to just an x. So, good question. Okay. Um, guys, there's a question on the free response if you've looked at it yet. Um, it's like the square root of 6x plus 8 or something like that, and you have to write the equation of the tangent line. You do still need to use the limit definition for that derivative because it's 6x under the square root instead of just x under the square root. I don't think we're going to get to that rule in time for you to be able to use that yet. Um, so you'll still have to use the limit definition this week. Okay. All right, so that is the general derivative. That's just the general derivative of this function. Let's find the instantaneous rate of change at 3. So f prime of 3, all we're going to do is we're going to plug in 3 into our derivative. So negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. That is the instantaneous rate of change. Why do what? Yeah. Okay, so that's the instantaneous rate of change. Then we have to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, for the equation of the tangent line, what two things do we have to have? Slope and a point. We do. What do we have of that so far? We have the slope, and we have the x-coordinate, we don't have the y coordinate. Okay? Um, so we need the y coordinate. That means that we need to find just f of 3. So plug in 3 into our original equation negative 3 times 9 plus 24 minus 5, so that's negative 27 plus 24 is negative 3, <coughs> minus 5 is negative 8. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. So the equation of our tangent line is going to be y uh, minus the y coordinate, so that becomes y plus 8 is equal to negative 10 times x minus 3. Leave it in point slope form. 
do not write it in slope intercept form. There's no points. All right, so looking at this parabola, okay, if I ask you about the tangent line over here, just to the left of zero, okay, that's a really, really steep tangent line. And then that part of the curve is super steep. So that's going to be a pretty big positive number, okay? Um, if we plug in zero, let's say we plug in zero into our derivative, negative six times zero is zero plus eight is eight. So if we look at our curve right here, when x is zero, that's still a pretty steep part of the curve. Okay, and that's a slope of positive x. Um, we looked at it when x was three. So when x is three, we're talking about over here. Look at the curve. It's decreasing, so it's got a negative slope, and it's pretty steep over here. Let's look at, say example, let's look at one. Okay, when x is one, Negative six times one is negative six. Negative six plus eight is two. At one, the curve is not as steep as it was over here at zero. That's why the slope of the tangent line is two as, as compared to eight. Um, so the closer we get to the vertex of this quadratic, the less steep our function is becoming. Let me zoom in on that part of the graph so you can kind of see that a little bit better. Okay, so see how our function is becoming less and less steep. It's kind of tapering off. It hits the vertex, and then it starts having a negative slope, and the slopes start becoming steeper um, on this side of the curve. That's what the f prime of x is negative six x plus eight. That's what that's representing. Okay, it will give you the slope of any tangent line on your curve. You just need to plug in whatever specific x value you're asking about. Okay. So, um, further left it goes, and then the more negative it's going to be, the further right it goes, the more positive it's going to be, um, and the steeper it's going to be because of the way this plus out function. Okay. So that kind of answer your question. It's not a slope. It gives you the slope at any point when you plug in the point. It's the equation to generate it. Okay, so that's the thing. A tangent line touches a curve at one point and it's supposed to be perpendicular to the curve. Okay, it's supposed to form a right angle with the curve. So it's a very, it's very hard to, to kind of visualize that. Um, what do you mean the curve? curve okay, curve. so, all right. So let's say, for example, this is, this is what our f of x looks like somewhat, okay? So the tangent line, let's say right here, is about like that, okay? Um, that is supposed to form a right angle between this line and the curve. Now, how do you form a right angle between the curve and the line? You can't because it's curved, but that, that's, why, that's why we had to start with approximations, and that's why we had to talk about that limit with the seat line. Um, you can get closer and closer to that point, is different from, let's say, this one right here. It's laying right on the curve. It's steeper than the other one. Right here at the top, at the peak, that tangent line is going to be horizontal. It's zero. Yeah, the derivative there is zero. So the further left you go, the function... Well, on this quadratic. 